when you investigate, you're trying to do, you, you're not, you're trying not to do interviews until you've done two things. And the problem is the two things are often in conflict. You're trying to get to witnesses first, but you never do a witness interview without being prepared for the interview. Because if the witness lies to you, you want to be able to confront them with the lie in the first interview. So take the Enron case. I was in a race with defense attorneys to get to particular witnesses, but I would never do an interview, even if we were racing, until we got all the emails of that witness and know precisely what their involvement was. Because what you don't want to do is lock in a statement from a, a potentially key witness that then turns out to be false. And then you're stuck with the statement. And so in the case of either Breedlove or the mayor, right, the, the judgment of the investigative team, and again, I didn't micromanage this, but the, their judgment was it's much more important for us to look for concrete evidence here that's in the record before we do these interviews. Isn't that all the more than troubling that you didn't get the physical evidence that the computers, the PDA, the, the other uh, electronic media when you first asked for it? Because, okay, maybe Bob Weaver is the most ethical guy in Oregon, but we know that Mayor Adams is not. So how do we know that he wasn't scrubbing himself or getting somebody else to scrub those computers or PDAs or whatever? Because the act of scrubbing leaves evidence. The forensics are good enough that you would The forensics are good enough that if you can you can identify if, if someone takes a computer and tries to delete a bunch of documents, they're going to leave an electronic trail which the forensics would discover. You know, one of the and, and so that concern me, frankly, right, if, you, if you're interested in potentially putting together an obstruction of justice charge, that, 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 that would be great, right? You'd look at the forensics and you'd see if there was an effort to manipulate the data. But then you'd say, okay, well, you said earlier that Weaver didn't turn over material because he wanted to know what was on there. Wouldn't it take Weaver, with all the resources that are available to him, six, 60 days to? find out what's on. So it does raise a question in my mind, and I understand yeah. the forensics are pretty good, but we, we also have plenty of evidence that Adams has made not only, has he, he's not only lied, he has made poor decisions. Yes. So, yeah. But you're confident that nothing was screwed. Well, let me add to Michael's question. Did, this is just my ignorance. Does forensics allow you to determine that files have been deleted, or does it allow you to determine what files have been deleted? Uh, it depends on the computer and the kind of device, but generally it, 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 would, it would allow you uh, to reconstruct what particular files have been deleted. So not just the stuff has been deleted, you'd actually be able to retrieve those files. You'd be able, to, it, it, and again, it depends on the device. Sometimes all you could get would be a file name. Well, in the case of Sam's computer, what, what were you able to determine? That no files have been deleted or files have been deleted? I, I'd have to go back and look at the forensic report, but the investigators thought there was no signs of obstruction of justice when we when we did the forensics. Before I forget, you you, you made reference in the press conference to this uh, that I think you called an anomaly or a lie that allows witnesses to lie to your yeah. investigation. Do you ever do anything about that? You know, um, it's one of the things that we'll probably consider in the off season is whether we ought to have a state law that uh, mirrors. Uh, 18 U.S. Code 1001, which is a federal statute. The most I think states. The, I, think the, I don't know about most states. Um, law enforcement has pushed for this on many occasions and um, never received it because of opposition from defense attorneys and from the civil liberties community. So I, I don't know if we're going to make a push for that. I would, I would tell you that if I thought putting people under oath would have made a difference to the case, we would have done it. Um, so let the, the, I know you've answered this question a hundred yeah. times. Yeah. I guess we're going to give you an opportunity. That's okay. One more time. And again, this is not an issue where I'll come speak for my or or I certainly don't have any expertise. But I have yet to talk to her. I will tell you that last week I talked to an AUSA and asked that person the same question. And that person said, I would have put him, I would have gone a grand jury. So, so, here yeah, that, so, so, so here's, but here's how a federal prosecutor's vision would be very different. One thing is federal prosecutors, in their grand juries, one of the reasons they use grand juries is because the statements are recorded and there's a transcript. And so you use them to lock in a precise version of what the person is saying. In state grand juries, we don't make transcripts. And so it has no value that way. 
I mean, that, that one of the primary reasons as a federal prosecutor I might use a grand jury doesn't exist in a state case. The other things that are important to me, in, in, and remember that I come to this as a, as, a, as a former federal prosecutor and not an experienced Oregon state prosecutor, one thing that's critical is that when I talk to district attorneys, they all say we don't use grand juries for misdemeanors. And so, you know, what we would be doing is treating this case very differently. What we have is an allegation. You said you treated this case differently. You said if this was, if this was you know, well, it's a question of it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a it's a question of degree. Second of all, one of the things I wanted to avoid is popping out with a decision not to charge where all I can say is, sorry, just like our shooting cases, right? Every time we have a, a police officer who shoots someone and goes to the grand jury, it's a black box, it pops out, and everyone in the public and the media screams bloody murder about the fix was in, they didn't take this seriously. Okay, so what I wanted to do was not have a grand jury. So you've got all of those. If I had done a grand jury investigation, you guys would have been sitting here screaming bloody murder about the fact that my decision wasn't transparent, you don't know what information I got, and the fix was in. So we did this 100% transparently so you can see everything that we did. And I think that's very important because like I said, there are political and ethical issues here that people have a right to know about and make their own judgments about. I think the, the, the other thing that's very important is, is I, I just don't think it would have changed our case. I mean, the, let's imagine, you know, Breedlove lies to us initially and then says something different in the grand jury. It's not like we would go, oh, the credibility issues are over. I mean, we, the, 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 the notion that putting someone under oath is somehow a silver bullet that gives you the truth is, is, is Naive. I mean, if I, if, I, if, I, if, I, if I thought that the gains in investigation would, would have been material, we would have, we, we would have used one. When you talk to Greenlove, was he represented by counsel? You know, we had six different interviews and... Um, Any one of those times? I, I do not know. I do not know. He was represented by counsel at various points in time, and I'm not sure when the representation started and ended. Why, as a, a statewide elected official, do you feel it's not appropriate to comment on the ethical and political parts of this? You obviously comment on the legal part in that in that role, but you are an elected official, a dem powerful democratic figure in the state, or the president. Because I think the the Bush administration proved that it's a mistake to mix politics and prosecution, and for better or worse, I got I, I, I don't I don't get that because the prosecution part's done. I mean that's been set aside. It's not like they can get mixed now. You put that aside. Now you have that, you know the I significant I political, believe political questions that have been raised, which you could comment on. Yes, and I believe profoundly that when I'm wearing a prosecutorial hat, I should not editorialize. But you're not anymore in this case. Um, you know, I'm the prosecutor of record, and will be till till. I mean, this this is just the fact. I'm a I'm a prosecutor who handled this case. If, if, I mean, I, I just think it's inappropriate for a prosecutor to make political comments or ethical comments uh, 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 about a case like that. 